And welcome everyone, Our Heart here with part one of my new Angmar Let's Play, Third Age Total War and Divide and Conquer version 5. At long last, it's time to return to Middle Earth for another great adventure. Thanks everyone that voted in the poll, obviously, as you can see, Angmar won. But fear not if the faction of your choice didn't win. My plan, once we finish this Angmar series, is launch straight into another Divide and Conquer campaign. So hopefully we'll get through some of those other factions from the poll, plus check out some others as well. There's been a lot of tweaks and changes in version 5 compared to 4.5 and 4.6, which were the previous versions of Divide and Conquer. If you want to pick up the mod for yourself, a uh, link to the Divide and Conquer Discord is in the description. That's the only place we can currently get version 5 it's in public beta at the moment uh, but they're essentially just doing polishing work it's perfectly playable uh, and you can dive in and start your own campaigns right now so playing this on very hard very hard difficulty uh, manage all cities show cpu moves we're going for a long victory condition which requires us to hold 40 regions including the old witch realm breland uh, the angle we need to eliminate the Northern Dunedain, Breland, and the High Elves. We may throw in our own objectives alongside that as well. There's kind of some bonus objectives. We've done that in the past. So an overview of Angmar. We have uh, our leader is Overlord uh, Agandor. Now, some of you might be thinking, but Lionheart, on your thumbnail and in your intro, you've got the Witch King. Uh, the Witch King can come to Angmar as a usable lord and hero. Uh, as part of your armies and forces, but he isn't actually their faction leader just because of the way the scripting and events work. But obviously, he's a prominent character of Angmar. That's why he's in the intro and thumbnail. And did you like the intro? Um, big thanks to H for Havoc, who is my intro maker. Uh, I think he did an absolutely stellar job. So yes, Overlord uh, Agandar is our leader. Our heir is Lord Skilled. I say his name. Uh, yes, overview of our faction of Angmar. Well-rounded faction, versatile roster, multiple enemies. Oh, goody. Armor-piercing specialist, though. That is going to be very useful considering the dwarves and certainly the elves and towards the mid-late game when they get some better troops. Um, notable units, we've got the Guardians of Khandum, Barrow Whites, and Dark Blades. So, um, without further ado, let's dive on in and begin our remnants of Angmar adventure. In we go. I should say, of course, uh, I'll be releasing this series every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday going forward. So subscribe, ring the bell, all that jazz. Uh, feel free to drop a like on the video if you're enjoying it. Uh, we'll be doing hour specials every 10 episodes. And what I've done in the past for Third Age and Divide and Conquer campaigns is that every 10 episodes at the end of the hour special, I've been using the console command to reveal the fog of war essentially kind of like a palantir effect so we have vision over the whole map it's not to gain tactical advantage over our enemies and kind of see where they're moving as such but more it's about checking out what's going on throughout the rest of the map if you guys would be interested to see that again let me know in the comment section what i'll always do though is include it right at the very end of an hour special episode that way and i'll give you guys a heads up as well that way if you don't want to be kind of you know if you want it spoiler free without seeing the map you can just end the video there. So here we are on the campaign map. Uh, Divide and Conquer, welcome. I'm not going to go through all of this. Um, I'm just going to kind of slowly scroll through it so you can just pause the video if you want to read that info. But if you've played Divide and Conquer before, um, then you'll be familiar with a lot of these features. Uh, that being said, it has been a while since I last played Third Age and obviously Divide and Conquer. And it's, this is my first time playing version 5, which is called a kingdom united uh, so if you have played any of that before you've got some tips and advice as always as always it's greatly appreciated so feel free to drop it down in the comment section uh, you can't name any units in this as far as i'm aware so we can't do custom unit names in this alas um, but i know a lot of you guys like to do your own stories and tales so i will be looking forward to reading through some of them and sharing them throughout uh, the series when we have some long loading screens perhaps Roman Sangma, I again I won't read through this one um, but I will read through their faction features scroll that's a new thing that's been kind of added in uh, but again if any of you want to read through this I will just slowly scroll through so you can just pause the video and have a read just gives you a bit of a bit of history bit of lore for the remnants of Angmar essentially they're not in a particularly powerful state at the start of the game um their might and power has been long since broken, but can can these men of the north, these remnants, rise again 
and reforge the Iron Crown of the North. This last bit is actually interesting. Rumours also abound amongst our men of the return of our great lord, the Witch King. Many hold that if we are able to conquer the North in our own name, the Lord of the Nazgul will return and lead us to ultimate glory. Imladris and Fornos must be destroyed by our hand to repay our long age debt uh, to the Dunedain, and then the world will be ours. So that's actually a nod to the, uh, the Witch King script. Essentially, to get him uh, to return to Angmar and appear as a playable, usable uh, lord and character, we need to conquer Imladris and Fornost, which is actually called Deadman's Dyke. Um, and it's about here. So if we take both of those, we have to hold them, I believe, um, within the same turn. I don't know if you then need to end the turn for the script to kick in, or it's once you've got both of them within a single turn. Uh, then he will spawn in. You then can let those settlements fall if you want to. So, I, I mean, I don't think the suggestion of a let's just rush to him, Ladris, is a good one or one that we can even do just because elves be strong. Um, especially because they'll be able to get out some of their more powerful units way soon and now the barracks event is gone. I'll come back to that in a moment. There we go. Orcs of Gundabad are at war with the Anduin Vale and their allies with Moria, us, and Dol Guldur. Uh, so in fact, let's just start there. Let's look at diplomacy. So we are allied to Mordor. We're not a vassal of Mordor. That's an important um, point to make. So we're just allied to them. Allied to Goblins of Moria and Orcs of Gundabad. I mean, hopefully that should mean the Orcs of Gundabad take care of our eastern, our northeastern flank here against the dwarves. Um, although I guess I have seen others suggest you could turn against Gundabad eventually. Or at some point if you just wanted to go over this way. But again, it's kind of not really part of our victory objectives. Um, we're going to be focusing on just conquering this chunk of the map here. I will, as often as I can remember as well, try and zoom in on this map, the mini map here, so I, you guys can see it a bit clearer because it is super zoomed out and small uh, by default. But yes, um, Barracks event. Uh, for those that aren't aware, in all previous versions of Divide and Conquer, there was something called the Barracks event, which essentially stopped you from being able to recruit your best units until the event fired, which would usually be between turn 65 and 70. It was a way of allowing the early game to the player to build up some progression, also allow the AI to build up and not get instantly flattened and steamrolled when the player inevitably or other factions inevitably brought out some powerful troops and smashed them. Um, they've now got rid of that. You can now recruit your best units um, the moment you have access to the building uh, prerequisites for them. Um, so it's going to be interesting. It's going to be kind of, I think it's going to be a slightly faster paced campaign and series compared to other uh, Third Age and Divide and Conquer campaigns that have taken ages to get our best troops. Um, there's our faction leader, uh, Agandar. Looks absolutely fearsome. He's got the Iron Crown of Angmar. Mountain Slasher. We'll go through all of these as we go. If there are any characters you let me take a deeper look at in future episodes, then do, of course, uh, let me know. But yes, um, Witch King can return if we can take Fornos, Deadman's Dyke, and Imladris within the same turn. And Mordor also has to be alive still. But um, I don't think I've ever seen the AI take out Mordor. It's just too strong. It's got too many stacks. Um, that will not happen. Right, let's begin our campaign. Um, I mean, I mean, this guy's a wraith, first of all. He's freaking awesome. Um, Hunvorn. We have a load of potential threats. Come back to diplomacy. We are at war with the Dunedain, Breland, um, Dwarves of Eridlun, and the High Elves. Um, Dwarves of Eridlun will take a little bit of time to get to us. There's a fair chunk of rebel territory over here. The more immediate threat is going to be the Dunedain, and the High Elves. Uh, and the High Elves are going to be tough. Especially now, as I said, the Barracks event isn't there anymore. So they can get out some pretty powerful archers and infantry units swiftly. So we need to try and if we're ever going to stand a chance of taking him Ladris, we need to, you know, secure some ground pretty quickly. I believe there's territory over here and like another fortress just outside of him Ladris, halfway up. So I doubt we can push that deeply, but we'll want to kind of essentially create some outposts that we can see the elves coming and then try and, as the uh, mod suggests, divide and conquer them where possible. Uh, we're also going to want to push down through here. There's a good number of rebel territories uh, this way before we get to the Dunedain as well. And we want to try and 
just stop them gathering momentum. I think the Dune Dome will be slightly easier in the Hyals. I think the Hyals are going to be my my toughest enemy to start with. And yeah, we will not be able to make a rush for Imladris. Um, I think we're going to have to wait until we can push out some really strong forces and then break them. So it's all going to be about tying up the High Elves as long as possible, keeping their, their forces at bay. Uh, let's send out a spy over here. Now, I did have a little, like, one or two turn quick playthrough with Angmar just to gather my bearings. Um, but more importantly, I wanted to say that uh, I need to be careful with this spy. You probably won't see me risking the spy going into settlement because I don't think I can actually get another spy for a very long time. Um, if at all. Uh, I only, again, I only played through the first few turns, but I'm not sure if I have the right combination of settlements that allow me to actually get more spies. I assume I must do, but we certainly don't get another one uh, or the ability to recruit another one early on. But yeah, so we're, we've got our general here our, and Barrow Whites. He's obviously Barrow Whites as well. Um, we are going to focus, first of all, just jump on out here and we're going to build a watchtower. Nothing which reveals um, lands, our Cheleg here. And we want to grab that, but it's got quite a few troops in there. We could try and siege them down, though. It's only going to take four turns. So I might actually do that. I just don't know if I can afford to spend four turns doing that. Um, My Lord. There's this settlement here with a load of uh, Rudolf Savages. So I'm going to try and throw in my own savages. We've got a, another general over here. Uh, Morholt the Hillman. You actually start seeing we've got quite a few generals that almost sort of themed with various units. So I'm going to try and theme their armies around the characters that are leading them currently. Obviously, this is a total war where you don't actually need uh, a general to lead an army. You can take them out, uh, which is cool. A bygotten era. A long forgotten feature. Uh, one I actually do desperately love. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to theme his around savages. We won't just exclusively have savages in his army. We'll always make sure we've got a few. We'll probably, uh, I say savages, uh, Rudor troops. We'll probably just have, though, eventually, when we upgrade his army with like elite archers and stuff like that, we'll probably just keep a few savages as a nod. Unless you can get more more powerful, like uh, Rudor champions or something like that. I don't know. But he'll always try and have a few of them in his army to theme him uh, as the hillman. Uh, likewise, this orc over here, he's a warg rider. We'll always make sure he's got some wargs and orcs in his force. Uh, we've got our faction heir over here. Uh, now, Angmar doesn't actually have a family tree, though. Uh, I think it was a feature they toyed with the idea and it didn't quite work out, so they've, they've done away with it. The Blade of Kandum. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, he's pretty decent. He has got... Um, I'll just pop him out here. His retinue is Dark Blade. So we definitely want to pal him up with another army because those are elite archers. Um, you can recruit some Snowwalk Spears. Those are mercenaries. I think what I'm going to do is... Yeah. Pop all you guys over to Mount uh, Graham. But I'm going to send these guys if I can. Yeah, there we go. More of a Tarth. It's just a load of Hillmen. Ah, oh, Huskar. I wonder if I can recruit Huskars. That'd be a good one for the Hillman's army eventually. Okay. I wonder... Cavalry, these are pretty... I say pretty powerful. Their stats don't look powerful, but I think I can maybe have them. It's an unwalled settlement. Remnants of the Rudar is this faction. And we're the remnants of Angmar. And we will strike you down. I reckon I can have them. How, how strong are the Hillmen? Um... Way of checking. Look at their stats here. Oh, they're super squishy. Yeah, okay. We can have them. Yes. So we'll go in and fight that in a minute. Let's bring you over from Latash to Mount Graham. Because yes. I think we're just going to need to fortify along more of a tarth. I know that... I think there's another settlement. Can I right click? Oh, okay. Well, I've got vision in on stuff, I think. They've changed it. I think you could... Could you previously do it across all the map? And now you can only do it on where you've got vision. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure there's another... Just thinking back to my High Elf series, I'm pretty sure there's another fortress there. I doubt we'll be able to crack it. Plus, what we need is probably 10, 15 turns in, hopefully the High Elves get distracted by Goblins of Moria doing stuff. That's what I'm hoping. Um, so yeah, send you guys down there. You guys are in over here. What we're going to build first as well, and this is where I really do appreciate some advice because I'm, I'm always terrible at remembering the right way of playing medieval 2 which is obviously what this mod is built on um 
but uh, I always kind of forget the various kind of medieval to specific economic stuff and obviously all the stuff the mod changes on top to remember of how to grow a good economy but one thing I do remember is that I need I should build the mason's halls first they take two turns they cost 950 gold but they reduce all further and future building costs by 15% and building times by 20% it's a good one to get pretty much everywhere so that's what we're gonna do over here as well if I can see mason's hall yeah right in front of me and these, the Militia Garrison. Now, they cost 100 gold, but they do spawn in two garrison units when the settlement's assaulted. So, it gives you a bit of a, a garrison, even though there isn't one showing up there. I'm assuming, yeah, that would... Do you still have to have a unit in there to stop enemies walking straight in and taking the settlement? And then it adds another two units if you had one unit placed there, so you'd have three. Or does adding that garrison, Militia Garrison building stop them just walking straight in? If anyone clarify that, that would be amazing. Uh, Khan Dum. Uh, you want to do the Mason's Hall. Did note though, this Temple of Melkor allows you to build more, or rather recruit more Barrow Whites. And they're really strong and powerful early on. So I'm quite tempted to try and rush towards that once we've got that Mason's Hall. I'm going to recruit some Angmarian Infantry. And some Angmarian Archers. They're just kind of our basic staple troops. And yeah, I'm going to throw in some more savages because they are effective against armor. Uh, I'm also going to queue up a diplomat for the following turn as well. Um, so that's another mechanic for Angmar. The barrows, they're all over here. You can see them dotted down. Wherever there's barrows on the map, that means you can recruit more barrow whites. That's the thing. I was thinking, Lionheart, there was something else you are going to do. I was going to click on this and go through the faction info of Angmar. So there we go. Scions of Arnold's Bane, the Angmarian strike forth once again to menace Eriador in the name of the Iron Crown. Um, led by Agandar, they have long preferred to meet their foe on foot in stout armour uh, and that tradition endured. Although they have also been keen archers uh, who can combat the superior Dunedain rangers as well. Uh, they hold an uneasy alliance with the orcs of Mount Graham and... Um, and the latter provide many mounted battalions, the vicious wargs with battle-ready orc riders. Further afield, the ancient curse laid by the Witch King on the burial mounds of the Dunedain still bear forth undead monstrosities to this day that will still fight for the Iron Crown. Our culture is that of the Shadow of Melkor. Followers of the Shadow of Melkor are those who claim fealty to the Dark Powers themselves, as represented in Middle-earth by Sauron himself. While most are orcs, having been first shaped by Melkor, some men, such as those uh, of the Angmarim, also pay homage to those Dark Powers. Those who follow the Shadow of Melkor can join in invasions, but must also answer Sauron himself. So special features for our faction... Um, Return of the Witch King. If Angmar holds Khandum, Imladris, and Deadman's Dyke, aka Fornost, and Mordor remains alive, Sauron will reward the might and tenacity of Angmar by dispatching the Witch King to command the realm of the Iron Crown once again. The Barrow Whites, which I've just mentioned, in regions with the Barrow resource, Angmar's Tier 2 and 3 Shrines of Melkor allow the recruitment of the Fell Barrow Whites. Building limitations, Angmar has no uh, building limitations and has full access to all settlement tiers. Okay, so I must eventually be able to get more spies then. Angmar also has regular access to level 1 to 4 armors from blacksmiths. Uh, the Ring Script, Angmar can either return the ring to Mordor by capturing the settlement the one ring has been found in and sending that general uh, with it to Moranon, or they can betray and forsake Mordor and choose to keep the ring for themselves. Dun, dun, dun. So yeah, you access that little overview for all factions in the game right now uh, by hitting the missions icon. An order. Pretty darn cool. Actually, I'm going to send you over here for a As watchtower. And I'm Nothing going to bring you back. I think I'm just going to pull all my troops together to go off. after this force. Because I might wait four turns, but I might also rush on in. I'm going to bring these savages on over. Savages, savages. Um, what I'm going to do is send them up over here we'll make yes, my lord. i will send you to join them the uh, but what i was hoping i could do is just yes. move you here pop a watchtower first this tower will keep vigil over the lands. it's important to place watchtowers that's fine he'll catch them next turn my lord. right let's yes, move uh i can do that. and my these two they've currently got free upkeep while they got that little purple background but they'll get free upkeep in forts you can have four units free upkeep in forts i believe your orders, my lord. Orders. 
That's good. What have we got here? Uh, Barad Heleg. Taking inspiration from his master in the south, which king built a grand structure in his ancient capital that survived this day. The Ice Tower. Oh my. So yeah, there we go. And what does he have? He has got temple wards. I can't remember what the bodyguard is that the uh, Witch King has, but it's different from all of these as well. And it's absolutely terrifying. Uh, right, I think that's all we can do for our first turn, aside from attacking more of a task. We're about to go in for our first battle, although we can do some recruitment here. Uh, more wargs? Yeah, why not? Treat yourself. Although, do I want some orcs first? Yeah, let's get some orcs first. Some hunters and some fighters, and then we'll get them. And can I get some more troops over here? We can get some thralls and some hillmen. Yeah, get them. They're fairly cheap. Right. Yes, my lord. So this is our orc. Oh, Dra uh, Drangu the bloody. I love how we've got such a colourful cast of characters already. It's great. Oh, my lord. In we go. Uh, I'm going to salt. I I should have probably done a quick save before I initiated this. Um... Just because I feel I seem to remember having to do that at the end of my high elf campaigns because it got a bit more unstable. So just for future, if you see me quick saving before battles, it's to kind of prevent. Well, give me a, a restore point if there's a crash or something like that. So the balance of power doesn't look good for us. We've got 234 soldiers versus 1026, but they are just hillman fodder. They do have one decent unit, the Huskars, um, but hopefully we can get some charges in and break them. Lionheart relying. <laughs> Putting all his hope into cavalry. Oh, this isn't going to end well, is it? No, no, no. In we go. Oh, I was really hoping for a really, you know, well thought out speech. But I mean, he's an orc, right? So finish him is probably as uh, articulate as we're going to get. Let's just have a quick little look. Uh, now, one question I always get is, Lionheart, how is your UI so minimal? I'm quite literally using the minimal UI uh, or the minimal HUD option, which, yeah, makes it far less chunky in battles. So he should be... Do they put them in the middle? Oh, no, they put them in the back, don't they? That, will that be him here with his blade? That will be him, won't it? There he is. And then... Oh, these are missile cavalry. Oh! <laughs> well, they've even got even less chance of surviving, probably. You little wars have a pet. He's a good wog. Right, well, let's try not get them killed then. Um, select them all. Skirmish. Let's have a look at the enemy. I've also enabled these little floating banners as well on the uh, units again. I say I've I've enabled them. Oh yeah, I have. There, they're they're bounce. They're only bounce over my troops. That sometimes gets turned off. But it's a fairly easy thing just to pop back on. It's just a, a little visual thing. Make it a little bit easier to see the troops on the battlefield, I find. Are they coming out to me? They are. We just have Hillman. They don't have any archers, so we should be able to go and harass them. Try and knock out that unit first. Just use up our missiles first and then go for some charges. Should make sure I've got some missiles available for the uh, Huskarls. Looks angry. Oh, it's so good to be playing this again after all these. After all this time. Oh, wait. I thought I put you guys in skirmish mode. Turns out I did not. Like one last thing I meant to do. Or did I accidentally press the button that turns it off? K. Okay. No, I don't think I did. Oh, wow. We're shredding them as well. There's nothing quite like the thwack and thud of missiles in uh, Medieval 2. I think it's one of the reasons why, to this day, I still love it. 
so much. They got missiles. But the, the impact and sounds of it. Very satisfying. We're taking a hundred of them already. We are shredding. So just send them all. Send them all to me. I think we're going to need to split up a little bit rather than just focusing down on one. But That first group is basically out of here. Go, Wags, go. Charge. I'm pretty sure I saw one die straight away. Oh, there was a few of them. Okay, get out of that. It's the general, so he will replenish his bodyguard. Okay, let's go back to just shooting them all. Three of them there. Okay, take out that one. There's... Yeah, the Huskulls. So just avoid them. You guys are on skirmish mode. Again... You guys are on that one. You guys are on that one. One or two of them got caught behind a little bit. Just keep skirmishing. Just keep skirmishing. Oh, absolutely shredding them. Please don't derp out your skirmish and keep running. Thank you. Guys, keep firing, please. Didn't get a particularly long... That's something I remember from this. You need to get a long run-up with your uh, cavalry to give them a charge order. They've charged out to me because they thought they could take three units of cav. Oh, how foolish they were. You switch target, go for them. Only half the enemy force remains. Pull away, pull away, pull away. They've lost half their force already. <laughs> 54. 54%. 2% of ours, that's fine. You guys focus on them. Are we able to bring these down? I guess they're probably more heavily armored. Oh no, missiles. Still doing right. Are they, are they just archers? Yeah, they're not like javelin throwers or anything like that. Nice. I know we've got the uh, circling to shoot as well, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. They went in for a charge, didn't quite connect. Ole! Oh, you guys are out of. Uh oh. You're out of ammo. Who's caught up with you here? Oh, there is literally one of them that's charged. The charge kept going. Managed to get him a bit. I'm going to ignore those groups over here and just come in and flank these guys with charges. charge them. See me general going for this charge. Should have a long enough right. Yeah, there we go. There's the charge animation kicking in. And rip, dip, do. To their butts. Shredded. Can't hit this one from all sides. Yeah, we definitely got the charge animation. Good tidings. Nice. The enemy general lies dead. The battle seems to be swinging in our favor. Absolutely crushed them. They're broken. They're fighting to the death. Which isn't always the best thing. If they're elite, they can still get some good kills on your own troops. Pull back. 
You guys form up here and then shoot on these guys a little bit before we charge them down with the wargs. We've not lost many at all. It's great. And they'll possibly recover some after the battle as well because it might be that one or two of these are technically just captured rather than killed. Go. Yeah. And they fired off their charge. Wasn't particularly effective, but they've now broken. Um, it's time to press the attack. Do we get more loot if we kill, if we run them all down? I'm going to continue. Or more XP, I think. It's always worth kind of running them down. Just flattened them. Hunt them all down, lads. Supper's up. And it smells of savages. Our foe is utterly vanquished. Damn, we lost 13. Let all who remember this day remember it as the day of our most glorious victory. Nice. So, yeah, the General's Bodyguard unit is actually uh, Mount Graham ra uh, Raiders. Lovely. Oh, we got, yeah, we got a heal. I'm guessing with the barracks event, then, do. Have they balanced? Does anyone know? With now the barracks event is gone, like the whole thing used to be that high, it used to be really tough playing as elves because of the really slow replenishment. And also it took forever to get those top tier buildings to replenish them. Is it, I guess it must be a bit easier now that you don't have to wait. You can get them from the start. My lord, our courage and honor have conquered. Lovely. Um, so if we exterminate, we kill the vast majority of the population. We gain 12 gold. If we sack it, we kill kind of like a medium amount, 127, and we get 30 gold. If we occupy it, we just get 46 uh, and no one dies. Um, that's the best one for public. Oh, wait, no. Uh, technically, you want to exterminate populace in places where there's lots of culture different from your own because it will help crush uh, dissidents. But we're just going to occupy this one. Lovely. Um, thing is, I don't necessarily think we're going to be able to keep hold of this settlement for particularly long. So what's worth throwing in? No Melkor's shadow there already. Um, there's mines here, so that makes it very good economic. We'll go for Mason's Hall then for now. It's a horse master. Of course he is. He's an orc. He likes the cold. Very low supplies. Uh, move. Ah, oh, seriously? That sucks. Captured enemy armaments. Can we lose that, do you reckon? Can that change? I don't know if you can, actually. I love the whole trait system in this, though. I'm going to expand. So he got horse master. Nice. Yes, my yeah, lord. Can I hop you out and just build me a watchtower straight away? This tower will keep vigil over I'm the now upset these guys. If we go to low yes. tax rate, we'll be okay. I probably orders, next turn still go up and build another watchtower can further up. No further, my lord. We can take that independent fort as well. Get ready for fighting. Um By your command. Yeah, can't armies, get back in. I was just thinking I don't want to leave him out there with no out. troops. That's okay. Your will, my Send these yes, guys up to reinforce. Lord. That'll be Your fine. Orders, my lord. We shall continue tomorrow. We get some hillmen. They are they're mercenaries, but I'm pretty sure that is the exact same amount as recruiting them from here, isn't it? Oh, cancel that. Oh no, 400 gold. Same upkeep though, so it's just 90 extra. Yes, my lord. Kind of tempted to give you some just to throw in here. Ooh, we are now negative though. Rats. Your orders, my lord. Didn't think of that, did I? Yes, my lord. Your orders, my lord. Yes. What we can probably do to offset that is no, we don't have a city anywhere, do we? To increase taxes. Oh no, we do here. Noise.
I just don't want our queues to be stalled straight away. Yes, my lord. Shouldn't have recruited the hillman. Your orders, my lord. Your will, my lord. Orders, my lord. An order. I can't send you anywhere. Made a boo boo. Yes, my lord. I've made a mustuck. Um, in that case, my actually lord. no. Seeing as we recruited that one there, let's just not bother recruiting the other one here. Job done. Yes, my lord. And I'm actually going to leave you on normal because I don't want to affect my growth of my settlements that much. Right, let's end the first turn. Uh, I should also say we, I'm, of course, using a royalty-free music um, kind of sub-mod for this. Because by default, the uh, Third Age and Divide and Conquer use the uh, movie soundtracks, which is super immersive, but obviously massively um copyrighted so great for playing in your own time but if you're a streamer or content creator um you just you just can't use it but thankfully d the dividing conquer team provide a very easy to install uh content creator friendly copyright free sub mod of sounds which is amazing right we've created a load of troops we're just holding steady I shouldn't recruit any more really right now. Projected profits of 68. Your orders, my lord. What I'm thinking is we go with that independent fort and chuck them all in there. Thing is, I yes, can't get down with you guys. Your will, my lord. Listen up. I might even pull you guys all together. I don't know yet. Um, Your orders, my lord. Listen up. Oh, now he's in the area. They're happy. Cool. Yes, my lord. So that's okay. I'm going to go over to this. F oh, what the heck? Your force are ambushed. 13 salt. Oh, not bloody trolls. Can I get away? I can withdraw from battle. That balance of power. Missile troop. Maybe the, the cav missile cavalry could deal with the trolls. The defense is pretty high, though. I've never had a good... Th those hillmen would definitely die. I don't want to risk losing. I could have retreat off the battlefield though, couldn't I? Ah, oh, I've got to be here, be trolls. I need those dark blades, don't I? Um, I I don't want to lose a general so early on. Uh... I'm not going to risk it. I am going to. Withdraw. Oh, no game saved. Retreat. Right, so I'm now over here. Orders, I've actually, oh, I've retreated round past him. That's fine. Are they going to come and attack me, though? No As you wish. They will not like that if I get out. I think send another troop to go help him. Okay, I might, ha I might have to fight it. This tower will keep vigil over I just want to get into that fort. Although, I'm um, wondering if, do, I don't think they actually come and attack you. I think they might just be static. So I might be okay. Now I've revealed them. That's we fine. No yes, my lord. Assembling a mighty host. That's lord. the plan. We shall engage. We, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna pull everybody yes. in together here. Yes, my lord. We're combining forces. Okay, we're just able to hold on. So I think we're gonna have to wait until we can get rams and then just go in. I don't know if we can afford yes. the strain on our economy for four turns of waiting. I mean, it's, it's, it's Hillman and Bandits. We should absolutely slaughter them. It's just where those archers get some kills off. And we can bring all of these guys down, can't we? And they can come in next turn. Okay, yeah, we'll attack next turn. That's what we'll do. Um, let's keep going over here. Find some uh, Dunedain. Oh, there we go. And dear. Yes, my lord. Yeah, Litash, I'm not too worried about um, kind of defending or anything like that right now. Just because I know it's right on our border with um, with our ally. Yes, 
So I've wanted to get some of these in, but I don't think it's going to be a doable. Thralls, you can do skill trim. See, if we're going to go up against the elves and their archers and stuff, we're going to probably need more riders, aren't we? Sorry, raiders. Raiders and skirmishes. What the skirmishes are? They're actually just... Not actually better at range. I mean, their missile attack is, is higher. Okay. But their range is 65 compared to 110 meters. So these must be javelins. They might be pretty good against trolls though. But their upkeep is 280. If I plop them in, that gets me in the red, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, so let's not do that right now. Let's... Throw another thrall for now because I'll probably bring it down here. And leave it at that. Besieging over here. Happy dappy days. Oh, yeah, we got the diplomat. I forgot about that. Ooh, yeah, we need to take this and get some money. Yes, my lord. Got the two we rams. Yes. Mason's halls everywhere. Fashion announcements. Oh, my diplomat. Oh, wow, he's really good. He's got a dark history. <laughs> Carries ancient relics and tomes. That bear in mind these very tales. And the residents of Eriador remember the tales of the might of Angmar and the terror of the Witch King's reign. Dun, 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 dun. He's great then. Respects other cultures. Not a very Angmarian thing to do. But I'll take it. Um, so yeah, you, oh. Maisie, over here. Because I'm assuming we've just got we've got oh we've got trade rights. Trade oh oh we don't we don't have trade or military access with Gundabad, so we can at least get trade with them. As you wish. And to unveil, maybe we can get some. Or oh, we should go down to Isengard as well. God, God, God. Right, bringing you guys into the army. Then we've assembled a nice big chunky force. And I think we're going to have a nice big old battle with them. You guys are heading up here. Um, I'm just going to nip down to Weathertop. And then I'm going to bounce back to see how you guys are doing. Weathertop has been reached. Weathertop once the great watchtower of Amon Sul, now a remnant of the Second Age and the Lost Kingdom of Arnor. Although its glory is long gone, its foundations have remained through the ages. It is said that the Tower of Amon Sul contained the strongest of the Seven Palantir, um, with which Gondor uh, could be contacted in times of need. After many battles over the Watchtower of Amon Sul, it was finally burned down by the Dark Forces of Angmar in the year 1409, the Third Age. Path block for Miss Bai. My lord. Uh, so there is Ossul. And there's the fort. It just triggers a unique map if you're there. Um, let's head back up here and keep an eye on those forces. On the field of we didn't get attacked. Oh, no, it did move, though. Your orders, my lord. Yes. Yes, my lord. And you go take that. And I'm going to send you over command. here. That should net us some free upkeep. Still going to be in trouble, though. They're getting free upkeep over here. It's probably all of these guys being out now, isn't it? We'll get some free upkeep when we take this, though. So that will help a bit. Yes, my lord. I don't want to go into the red straight away. Wanna, we need to grow our economy. Right, let's have Good this order, battle. In yes. we go. Okay, so bump power three to two, but I don't want to risk taking those casualties. I think we can do better by fighting it ourselves. So in we go. I mean, the worst unit they've got there, or the, the best unit they've got are the cell swords. So let's do it. In we go. Oh, 
a lovely day for a siege. Can have a nice speech to kick us off? Sound the trumpets, beat the drums, cheer your guts out. This is going to be a good battle. Yeah, I'll give it a I'll give it an eight out of ten. Have a look at some of these new units. I say new units, all of these units. The generals though, look at them. Agandar, our faction leader. Looks awesome with his temple wards. Uh, let's get the arrow. Let's have all the hella heavy infantry together. Look at those barrow whites. Oh, look at him there. Our wraith. Beautiful. Be kind of cool if if uh, if he got defeated in battle and died, he actually just respawned. Regular barrel whites look awesome as well. Amazing. Oh yeah, we've got our Hiltman, haven't we? You're probably going to be a bit squishier than the others, aren't you? Yeah, so I need to be a little bit careful with you, otherwise you'll be my first casualty. <laughs> and have you with the savages. Uh, actually, I'm going to take you off that and put the pikes on the ram. Uh, oh, that. There we go. Pop the pikes. Yeah, I'll pop them over the other side. Have you guys up here? Seeing, do I want to attack one side, or I want to spread them out? I probably want to spread them out just so that we can try and flank them a little bit. Um, Just wondering, do I want to go for something like that and then just have the rest of the Hillman troops over the other side? Could I have to send the archers around, wouldn't I? Will prevail. Or maybe the infantry, if we're going to have all the heavy infantry going in. They should be able to have it, right? Getting my infantry and archers look pretty cool as well. Iron crown sigils on them. Um, let's get you together then with the savages and the hillmen. You got four, haven't you? Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll give you the archers, and yeah, we'll, then we'll flank them. That's what we'll do. So we'll go over here. That's the first round on this side. I'm assuming there's not. Is there a gate? Maybe the other side. Uh, unfortunately, it's not. A, it's not a. No, oh, there is one over there. Go for that, and then really split them in two. Actually, yeah. Let's. You know what? Let's do that. It's going to be a bit of a bit of a walk for these guys. But let's do that to try and pull them apart. So I don't need to engage with these guys till we're ready. And then I was going to give you the archers as well, wasn't I? Hmm. You'll struggle if they send their full force to you. But I might be able to just tie them up my archers at the front. Yeah, screw it. You guys at the front. Nice. Uh, well, last thing I want to check was... Oh, abilities. Black Hand of Mordor. Don't tell me what it does, though. Serpent Elixir, which is unavailable. And Iron Fist. Okay, let's do it. If they deploy it all over here, oh, that's fine. Let's just come to you guys. Send you around here. And Hillman, around behind. Go, go, go. Where's the actual capture point? It's not down. Oh, it's up here. Nice. Oh, my archers can fire already. Beautiful. That means they're going to bring their archers up. So I'm probably going to need to push forward. Or are they going to push out to us? Start marching you guys forward if they close it. We're all good. Where are they going with their archers? Up onto the high ground. Smart. That's where the cell swords are going. 
So the bug, the 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 gate bug glitch has existed since Medieval Two. Then. So we should have a clean charge in. But if we pin them at the front, then those guys can charge in from behind, and we can clear the. Uh, away the rest of them. I wonder can I my focus far on the cell swords because they're the they're the most dangerous unit these guys have got and knock them out early that'd be great speed oh it tells me what they do now iron fist three uses 150 second cooldown 30 second duration 150 percent combat effectiveness for 30 seconds and permanent fatigue reduction nice black hand of mordor three uses 180 second cooldown 30 second duration minus three enemy morale locks own army morale high and 35 percent chance of temporary enemy infighting for 15 to 20 seconds Oh. They've charged on out to us. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Hey, where'd those cell swords go? This Woodland Hunter's not firing. Amazing. Now in that case, yeah, let's do it. What was yours? The Serpent Elixir. One use, 60 seconds uh, duration. 75% probability to stun enemy units for 3 to 5 seconds, plus 150% own army combat effectiveness. What does that mean? Does anyone know what combat effectiveness translates to in this? They pull these guys back. Their missile troops, they've just completely taken out the fight on the high ground. I am A-OK -okay with that. I'm A-OK -okay with the fact they've charged on out to us. Get him, lads. Oh, the derpy. Oh, they're... Oh, wow. Okay, they're... They're coming out here as well. They're just charging. I didn't even see that they had units out over here. Charge. Decide to just charge out towards us. I don't know what they think they gain by doing that, but okay. Swarm them. Lord of those bandits. Are they sending the cell sort? They are. Okay, so that I'm not happy about. That's not good. The only thing. Ah, they've. Okay, they've realized that we don't have a ram. Or we do have the ram. Were they just trying to destroy the rams, I guess? I didn't think they could do that. If those cell swords are coming out, I want them charging into my pikes. I'm going to slaughter these guys at the gates first. Three percent to their thirty-three percent lost. Redeploy the archers. The 
thinking if we want to try and take on those cell swords with what we've got over here, the hillmen. We've got to have them charge into the pikes and then have the savages flank them because the savages are the armor-piercing ones. Let's see if we can do that. I'm surprised at how well they're holding, but I think it's more of a pathfinding issue rather than actual actually their troops being effective. I'm just really happy they decided to pull their archers out of start oh, spoke too soon. I think they heard us. Far off all our abilities, why not? Doing all right against the cell sword so far. We've captured the enemy's walls. Nice. Yeah, we've done it. Only half the enemy force remains. Right, we've got to get in against those archers pronto. Good tidings. The nice. general lies dead. Beautiful. Let's club him to bits. In again. Go after the woodland hunters if you can. Get him. Beautiful. Broken. How are we doing over here? 38 of them. We've pushed them back against, against the wall. They're desperately like, trying to hold the breach. Yeah, thanks for that. So probably easier fighting you guys charging out to us rather than getting caught in the streets. ground with him. You guys have done great over here. Note self, a line of pikes and then some savages to flank. It's going to work pretty nicely. They got some infighting going on back there. Nice. Capture the gateway. We push them through. Get up there. Come 
won't get him. Six times speed. Enforcement's got a wow, they just did a massive like swarm forward. And the unit they were fighting just broke, so they charged on through. I've got a 17%. I wonder how many we'll have after they get healed. percent what a great uh i mean we've had we've had one battle with already with the uh with the wargs but what a great kind of first big battle our first siege swarming over the bandits get them barrel whites Was my loyal savages. Kind of feel like he's my Tyrion, leading his band of savages. What happened to the? Um, were there any cell swords left, or did we take them all out? loss to see how much we get after we uh, heal the victory we have won here today say so heal essentially like our casualties being released or not casualties our captured troops being restored 15 percent okay got four percent heal 309 loss not bad who got the most kills 247 the barrow whites amazing oh, yeah. and there's only like there are only what 50 how many of them to start with it was 13. Yeah, there are like 57 of them to start with. That's that's not bad at all. Temple Ward's only 42. Yeah, I don't think they didn't get them in the right position because there's so many of them. The small unit actually gets better maneuverability, less pathfinding issues. 156 kills with the with the other Barrow Whites. Oh yeah, we don't actually know which one. Um they both took 13 casualties. <laughs> um Oh, wait, hang on, 46. Oh, yeah, sorry, two heals. So it'll be these ones. So it was our our lord that got 247. Our, our hero, our wraith. Amazing. Then 133 with the pikes. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Great stuff. Well, there we go. back to the campaign we'll probably go through the end turn and then we'll uh, pick things up at the start of the next episode so if there's anything you want me to elaborate more on future episodes or if you've got um anything you, you any bits of advice that you think are super critical and i should be aware of for next time then do let me know uh, in the comment section look forward to reading your comments look forward to reading your stories and tales that i know inevitably some of you guys will do for this campaign already super excited to see them um i am gonna occupy the settlement for now because that should 
have a little bit of our culture in there, so that should be okay. Income is now all good again. Uh, we don't have really any free upkeep. But new expands. Veteran warrior. Lovely. Beautiful. Not bad at all. Um, yeah, we'll probably look to see if we can... I mean, if they're going to go for that settlement, let them it's take it, wear the themselves down, and then take it off them. Then I there is, I think you, it's a settlement over here. I want to say it's called, is it Ang Sol over here? I want to grab that soon because that will be, I don't know how far we can push this way against the dwarves. Uh, but we want, obviously want to gain a bit of territory over there my lord. where we can. Your orders, my lord. Uh, yes, my all right, hang on. I can pop you out here. What I'm going to do with you is just take you out. I want to build a few watchtowers. Tower just so that I've got vision on elves. Um, can I go across yes. here? Yeah, I can still get back. With honor. Put another watchtower in this and then get back over here. Over the lands. Have a taste of my blade. Yeah, I don't know about those trolls. We might have to fight them with these guys. I'm hoping maybe they'll just harass. Do they harass the other factions in the game? Or is it only me? Uh, yeah, we just need to save some money so that we can build some other buildings. Notably, get some income stuff going on. That's going to be helpful. We've got a town here. Just don't have any money to build anything. So let's get on that when we can. We'll get a few more back there. But what I really want to do is that temple to get more barrel whites. So that's what I'm going to try and save up for. Let's end the turn. My Lord. And see what situation we find ourselves in for next episode, part two, which will of course be out on Friday. And then obviously from next week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday going forward. But I hope you've all enjoyed this first episode. Okay, Andros is under attack. New mission. Send the emissary to Anduin Vale. We will get a military unit. Nice. Yes. We'll do that next time then. So we're still rolling up with our income. That seemingly is just sat there now. Probably need to take it out eventually. I don't know if we risk going for that fort or not. See if we can spy where the uh, high elves are. Let's just so we know where they've gone. See what the Dune done. done. They're sieging the it. So we should get our army probably in ambush if we can. Ready to then face the victor of this siege and claim another settlement. So until the next one, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. Until the next one, ciao for now.